Okay, I will not talk so much uh, about uh, technical issues, uh, but more about the usage of them against deviant behavior. And I would follow some thesis. One of it is um, that we see a shift of repression uh, to the so-called uh, proactive repression. Proactive is a term uh, that is being used in the security critical uh, academic debate, which is quite different from preventive, because um, if you want to prevent something, um, then you have something uh, which is existing, uh, which you prevent for, but for proactive, uh, the proactive approach is more like um, to try to foresee any kind, any threat that might happen, that does not exist yet, but that might happen in the future, uh, and act against it. And I will try to show uh, this shift in the uh, police networking in Europe, and I will, at the end, uh, give a proposal uh, how to act against that. So, first of all, I will talk about some institutions, and in the second part, I will talk about the technical aspects and how they are used. Last week, the IMF director um, declared us that uh, the IMF is expecting much more riots in the future uh, related to the money bank crisis, for example. And this is um, not uh, the only institution, uh, for sure, um, that is preparing for uh, public disorder, for whatever riots, disturbances. Also, the NATO. This quote comes from a strategy paper that is uh, written for the upcoming NATO summit that will take place uh, in Germany and France in April. And the NATO wants to decide a new strategy, which is also a proactive approach, a proactive uh, strategy, including the usage of nuclear weapons uh, for proactive reason. Um, and in this quote, you can see that the NATO uh, is quite concerned about the homelands. So normally you, you would think that the NATO is uh, um, operating in so-called third countries, so outside um, uh, the NATO membership countries. Um, but in the strategy paper they talk uh, quite a lot. Uh, they uh, strengthen that the, the relations, um, so with the homeland security, um, is very important and in the paper they propose uh, networking a comprehensive approach of all different sectors of the society against any possible threat. So here you can see the more and more shrinking linking um, of the different um, parts of the society above all like military and police which in Germany for example is currently a debate uh, to use the military uh, in home affairs, so internal security. Um, also in the United States, so last week there was a report published by a so-called war college, probably there are many war colleges in the USA, but one of them published a report um, which, in which they propose that by 2012, 20,000 soldiers should be ready to be used inside the United States if they are needed, um, because they expect also public disorder in the future. As you might know, Italy already does it. Um, there are uh, now 3,000 uh, carabinieri, which is the paramilitary police force in Italy, being used um, to support the police. You have this also in France, for example, uh, with a paramilitary force, um, which uh, can be also under the responsibility of the defense minister. On the other hand, the EU ministers of interior are very interested in the um, external security now. Like the NATO, um, like uh, I showed for NATO, there is also a white paper published by a so-called future group. I will explain later what the future group is. Um, and what future they mean. And uh, in this white paper, they give advices how to deal in the future with the um, European internal security. And this is very important because in November 2009, 
the ministers, uh, the EU ministers of interior will meet and decide the next five years plan on European internal security. And this is quite heavy and the German minister Schäuble is playing a very crucial role in that and I will explain that later. What I want to, uh, what I want to point out is um, why I'm here is because I find it very important that the struggle against surveillance control, new databases um, like uh, forensic remote search of computers, etc., um, should leave the national level because um, you have that in many countries in the EU. And if you go to another country and uh, explain them, yeah, now we have this uh, data retention law, oh, you have that also? Oh, that's interesting. So we have to much more network um, and try to set up a European campaign against that. Um, like the Arbeitskreis Vorratsdatenspeicherung, how to translate that. Um, uh, so, like they did it with the Freedom Not Fear Action Day um, in autumn, but I would say it didn't work because it was uh, very badly prepared. The EU Home Affairs is orientating much more on the um, idea of the Homeland Security Department in the United States, uh, acting, uh, trying to act with uh, risk analysis, and this I will also try to show in some examples. So this was a brief overview about some uh, institutions. So uh, these guys uh, are uh, responsible for their European internal security. These are the ministers of uh, interior and justice. And um, they met, well, they meet very often, but they met also in 2007 when Germany had the um, uh, so, when the G8 uh, presidency was uh, by the German government and also the first half of the year the EU presidency. And many people uh, get organized against the G8, for example, as you might remember in Hallingdam, there was lots of protest. But uh, I would say we forgot uh, to look at uh, what they decided because uh, they decided um, very heavily um, so they, they really changed the, uh, the future of European Home Affairs because they took uh, many heavy decisions. And the main actors were Schäuble, as the Minister of Interior in Germany, and uh, Franco Frattini. Frattini was the former commissioner of the EU for um, Home Affairs. Now he's Minister ex uh, of Exterior from uh, uh, Berlusconi. But they both... Um, are very pushing uh, the European police networking forward. And it's interesting to be here and to talk about uh, that here and uh, that place because every year the European police is meeting here. Um, they do it also in six weeks again uh, to explain uh, themselves um, so, uh, so the new measures in the country and how to develop a common European perspective, so which is the European Police Congress. One of the changes is uh, the so-called cross-border crime fighting. So before there had been a treaty which was called Prim Treaty, which was like more or less a trial, um, how this might work out. And the Prim Treaty has now become European framework. That means it will be adopted by each member country. And this means that uh, every uh, police force or every minister of interior uh, can order support uh, from other countries and uh, police can be deployed uh, in other countries, which is very well developed between Germany and France, for example, or Germany and Switzerland. You had that at the Euro uh, Championship last year, for example. German police helped the, the French police, or also at the G8 in 2003, um, when the German police came with the water cannons, because in France they didn't have them. And this is now, um, as I mentioned, EU framework, which is quite interesting. I was thinking about uh, Greece now, uh, what, uh, because the riots are still going on and they will go on. This is announced. Um, and uh, I'm not sure uh, if, for example, in these cases, uh, they might request some help from uh, other police forces from other countries. Also, Europol, which is the um, European police force, uh, gets much more competencies and plays a coordination role. Europol is involved in all relevant meetings that are concerned uh, on European police networking. 
And if I say more responsibilities, that means that uh, next, no, um, in 2010, Europol uh, will, be, uh, will have enlarged competencies and will be now responsible for all serious crimes, whatever that means. Um, Europol is already, already running a so-called Check the Web platform, uh, which is obviously um, observing the internet. I'll talk a little bit about that more later also, about the, the technical aspect. And Europol is running also a database. Um, it's not really known about what, uh, but they say um, a database on everything that concerns our responsibility. So, European police issue, I don't know. Um, and for sure they have also a data exchange with uh, national police forces. Up to now they have to make the data exchange uh, by hit or no hit uh, um, requests. But it is foreseen um, that, uh, so they need so-called liaison officers, like networking officers, something like that, to where the police has to go, can you please check if there's something inside? Yes, there is, okay, then we make a request to know what it is. And this should be much more easy in future. So this is about Europol. Then you have a so-called situation center, which was created in 2004. Um, it is a networking of the secret services. And it is a bit uh, weird because uh, the purpose of a secret service is uh, not to give information to another country, um, but so they share information and obviously not all information. And uh, you can see very well that there is lots of uh, competition already going on, so about the competencies, um, not only uh, with the secret services for sure, but also among the police, also with Europol for example, because many national police forces don't want to give anything of their responsibility. But all these efforts can be seen um, as uh, steps to the creation of a European Ministry of Interior, which um, uh, normally, if, if the ministers are asked on that, they say, no, 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 it's not like that, it's just like more networking, um, more um, pointing out the European aspect. But this is uh, what many people um, that are critical with these developments uh, guess that in future, and they try to build up something like an own Ministry of Interior. Probably you heard already about Frontex. Frontex is uh, the agency for, uh, that is responsible for the security at the borders. Frontex has very different units. They also have a, a rapid uh, intervention team. But why I mention Frontex here is because one of their basic uh, issues is risk analysis. So try to find out when will uh, refugees come from which country, which, uh, um, so which countries will they cross, which route they will take, where will they uh, try to enter the EU, um, and then to quickly inform the, the concerned um, border troops of the, of the country and help them also with own stuff. So, also about Frontex, uh, about the technical issues, I will explain more later about the usage of satellites, for example. Another institution is a program that is called, uh, as I mentioned there, a research program on security during major events. Um, I was introduced by uh, that our group Kipuzuli came, uh, was installed after the G8 in Genoa and the heavy protests, so maybe you remember the, the police, um, uh, how they acted against the protest. And uh, after 2001, after Genoa and Gothenburg, Gothenburg there had been a EU summit where also had been very heavy demonstrations and they created uh, an own program to, uh, to elaborate standards how to cope with the summit protest, um, because uh, it was not safe enough and lots of disturbances. And so they developed some, they worked out some standards, which are, for example, building fences, as you have seen in Halligendam, or, for example, having very good relations to the press. Um, also exchange data of uh, possible troublemakers uh, beforehand, which uh, normally the police then doesn't let into the country. And 